Talk about growing sunflowers. For those people who are thinking about, hey, I want to have a sunflower patch at my house, what would be your best advice to them? They're super easy. So, so get online. We buy from a couple different variety, a couple different stores. We do Johnny's seeds and we do Harris seeds. You can buy a little tiny consumer pack. I think they come in like 250 seeds. They're all available to ship direct to your home. And you can just throw them in the ground, plant them an inch, an inch deep and water them and you kind of water them until they come up and then they like to water about once a week. They don't want to be overwatered. And you'll have beautiful sunflowers all summer. They're a really easy crop. When you compare them to pumpkins, they're a do-it-yourself fantastic thing. Pumpkins are way more complicated. So for me as a pumpkin farmer and corn maze farmer and cow farmer, sunflowers are like, wow, this is the best thing I've ever done. So they are a super easy thing. They're gonna, you know, if you get the right branching varieties, they can last you two to three weeks. So they'll keep blooming. They'll just kind of keep putting out beautiful flowers. You could stagger them, you can plant them you know, a couple weeks apart so you have like one that comes on in the beginning, you can cut them out when they're done, have another one that kind of comes up on the other corner of your garden and, and bloom. They're very hardy, they're really tolerant of, of water over watering and under watering. They're obviously really tolerant of desert conditions. These haven't been, some of these haven't been watered in six weeks, they still look amazing. So they're just really, really an easy thing to do for a, for a garden. So Dallin, it sounds like the toughest thing for me is going to be deciding which sunflower to plant because you told me there are hundreds of varieties there are there's a ton so so there's some easy things you can do when you get on like the harrisseeds.com you can look and they'll have different kinds that will show you like how tall they're going to get or if they're going to have multiple blooms or a single bloom and then a lot of that is just kind of preference do you like a red color do you want just yellow you know do you love that deep orangey sunflower color and then do you want to have one that has lots of it so it looks really full do you want it kind of just above your fence so it looks like it's got lots of you know individual blooms do you want to grow the tallest sunflower that's 12 or 14 feet tall and outpace your neighbors and have it be taller than your house? And that's all just the fun of it, right? And you, that's the fun thing about farming is that you can try again something next year, right? You can, if you didn't like how it looked this year, plant something next year that's different. Can you take the seeds from every variety? Can you eat the seeds from every variety? So I will confess that I don't know on some of these little, um, on what they would call a pro cut variety, which is better for like your counter because they don't drop pollen. I don't know if your seeds they're not they're pretty little like when we planted them they're maybe the size gosh of like maybe a half of a corn kernel so they're a little bit smaller than a, like what you think of with a regular sunflower seed the field variety that we planted kind of that clear field variety they are what they use for seeds um they're all going to go to seed of course but the blooming is about 50 to 60 days through their process and for seed production to be finished is about 110 days on most varieties between 90 and 110. so you'd have to be committed to letting your garden look a little sad where your sunflowers are kind of hanging down and, and forming those seeds as part of the process rather than just being beautiful blooms. Right. So you said something very important though. You talked right. about the pro cut and dropping pollen on your countertop. So one of the important things is deciding what you want to do with your sunflowers, Exactly, right? yeah. So if you're going to take them inside, you know, look for ones that are that pollenless variety so that they stay clean. If you're going to put them on something fancy like a beautiful wood, you know, table, you don't want to have that little yellow dust every morning and afternoon and evening because they are really prolific little pollinators. You know, throughout the field you can see honeybees just full of pollen as they take it back to the hive. And, and if you want that, that's spectacular. If you want to see bees, if you have a little beehive, if you want to attract butterflies, the pollen variety is a great way to go. If you want to put them in their home, then you definitely want to just have a pollenless variety because they'll be a little cleaner. Best variety if you want the sunflower seeds? Clearfield, for sure. And they're a little bit hardier and they're a little bit more, um, they're going to be huge and they're going to have a great big open head. The other varieties would be like a mammoth variety or a titan variety. So the mammoth is going to be that sort of like that eight to ten foot tall flower. It's going to have about a foot long, about a foot wide head, and it's going to produce a ton of seeds for you. You can stick it in your oven and bake them, kind of dry them out, and then you'll just peel the seeds out and bake those. Um, those larger varieties are what you want to go for. So all the sunflowers, right, are going to bloom for that seven to ten days, which is part of their reproductive process. So that's when they pollinate, right? And then once they kind of are done pollinating, you'll watch the heads and they'll sort of start to droop forward so the birds can't eat the seeds. And then the blooms kind of start to die off and they'll start to expand. So this one right here is a really good example of like kind of where the seeds are starting to form. So like it's just barely beginning, but if you look in here, if you kind of peel the flowers off, these are all your sunflower seeds in that little head. And if you even open up more, like kind of like this right here, you can kind of see those little tiny seeds and how they're starting to form and if you open them you can even eat a raw sunflower seed. They're just delish. This is a Clearfield variety. Um, it's probably the most common variety in the United States. They use it all the time for seed production and for oil production and different things. They bloom for about 10 days so they're pretty stunning those 10 days. They all bloom about the same time. If you plant them at the same time 
Um, they are a pollinating variety, so if you look at the leaves, you'll see little, little drops of yellow dust, which is kind of fun if you're outside and the honeybees love it, but if you're in, inside, people don't love it on their countertops as much. <laughs> They, um, they all have a yellow center. They'll get pretty large. Maybe later we can go out and look at some of the ones that bloomed last week and see how big they get with their seeds as they start to produce. And um, A sunflower actually is made up of thousands of little individual flowers, and so each seed has its own little flower. And then the petals around the outside are just part of the larger flower. So if you get in close, you can see all the little tiny parts of the flowers inside. Um, they're kind of cool in the sense that they will all track the sun completely until about the day before they bloom. And the day before they bloom, they all face the sun rays and they stop tracking the sun. Prior to that, you can actually see some of the ones that haven't bloomed. Even the leaves will track the sun perfectly throughout the whole day. So it's kind of fun. They've been fun to watch and fun to grow. And they're all day length sensitive. They're all heat sensitive, right? So if you plant on May 1st, we have a cold spring. They're going to come up about the same time if you plant on May you know, 15th or May 20th. It doesn't really matter. The first planting we did May 12th, and so they've kind of already finished. But if you stagger planting or if you plant a branching variety, then they'll bloom for three or four weeks because the first bloom, each flower will only open for seven to ten days. But because the plant will continue to produce more blooms, you'll get blooms all summer long for the second half of the summer. So on, on like a regular level of just planting like some in a garden, they're really, really hardy. They're really drought hardy. They're really moisture hardy. They're like the perfect plant because they'll tolerate a lot. Um, when we're growing them on this scale, you know, they take a ton of nitrogen, a ton of phosphate, a ton of potassium out of the soil. They're really good nutrient scavengers. They'll take a lot of soil out. Their roots can go six to eight feet deep in ideal conditions. And so, if you don't replenish the soil or put good fertilizer on, the next crop is like nothing because they've used it all. Um, but they're pretty hardy and they're pretty tolerant. And so these guys have had some fertilizer, but not a ton. They're pretty low. They're what most farmers would call a low input crop. But if you're trying to do seed production, then they, they are actually about normal with, you know, the amount of input and the amount of stuff that goes into them. So water's pretty amazing. Um, they can tolerate a lot. So here we're in between two rivers, and so when the water table is high, they can tolerate that higher water table. And then some of these flowers we haven't watered in six weeks and they're still blooming because they're just such good, that, that deep tap root can tap into that lower groundwater that other plants can't. And so most farm crops are maybe a 30 to 36 inch deep root at the most. And so where these guys can go so much lower, all those nutrients and water that are lower, they can tap into no problem. And it's kind of a kind of an easy thing for them. We planted these 22 inches apart and they're about 12 to 14 inches on some of the varieties we went as close as nine. If you plant them close together, they'll just have a little bit smaller bloom and a little bit smaller leaf structure. If you give them lots of room, they'll go to their full height and they'll do their whole full display. But um, again, they're like really tolerant. They're very forgiving. So you can kind of plant and have them be beautiful wherever you need. Funnest thing about planting sunflowers? Watching them follow the sun. It's been so cool. They just totally track the sun all day and then the next morning they've totally reset and they're ready to go. Again, it's like this principle of looking to the future and having hope in the future because they are not worried about that effort that it requires to look back at the sunrise. They are just dedicated to moving right back in the morning. They know it's going to come from the east and they're ready to go. All the leaves point to the east and then throughout the day they just track the sun and by the end of the night they're all pointed to the sunset. And, and as soon as they bloom, they're done with that. They just face the east. They just are facing that sunrise so they can get as much sun in the morning. And that has been so cool to watch because I don't think any other crop really does that the same sunflowers do.